Welcome to Barnes Takeout, your daily serving of art. I'm Robin Craren, the Collections Research Coordinator at the Barnes Foundation. And today I'm going to talk to you about a, an early American glass pitcher in a Pennsylvania German cupboard on the east wall of room 18, which you can see right in front of you. So I'm gonna zoom in so you can see all of these beautiful glass pieces. Most of them are early American. They were collected by Dr. Barnes in the 1930s. Um, and there are 54 inside of that cupboard. They're often overlooked by, by visitors, probably because they're behind glass and they're pretty dark. But today we're gonna look a little bit more closely at this beautiful pattern molded piece right here. It was created in about 1825 to 1840 um, in Massachusetts by the Sandwich Glass Company. I'm gonna switch to it so that you can see a bit more in detail. So this piece of glass is known as a pattern molded glass or a blown three mold. It would have been gotten its pattern and shape primarily from a mold. And it was blown, uh, it's glass blowing. There are different types of glass making, but for the purposes of today, we're gonna to be talking about glass blowing. You're probably familiar with it and you've seen glass blowing, a glass blowing demonstration before. Um, you often see them set up at fairs or historic sites or maybe even a Christmas market. That's known as free glass blowing. And like I said, this was created into a pat into a mold to create its pattern. So it's known as, as mold glass blowing. Um, glass itself often usually is made of three different substances, silica, uh, which could be crushed quartz or flint or sand. <clears throat> and that needs a stabilizer, which would be calcium, and a flux, which is an alkaline substance, could be potassium carbonate or sodium carbonate. And those three substances make up molten glass, which would then be, uh, which would be melted inside of a glass furnace. Um, and for creating uh, this piece, they, a glass blower would have put a gather of that molten glass onto a long steel hollow pipe that he would use uh, to blow air into. So he would put a um, gather onto this uh, steel pipe and then he would uh, roll it over a marver, which is a flat metal surface that the glass blower uses to manipulate the shape of the glass. And he would do this to create this initial shape to then place into a mold. Um, and an assistant would probably help with this. Um, this piece is, was done with a two-part mold. So it was usually hinged so that they could open it uh, to place them, the ga gather into it and then close it to then create the shape and open it again once the shape had been created. Um, but as I mentioned, this type of glass is known was known as blown three mold. So primarily a good portion of them that were created were created in three piece molds, uh, but this one just two. It probably, it probably made it a little bit more simple to make. Um, so they would have placed the gather inside of the mold um, and closed it. And then the glass blower would have uh, blown air into that gather to expand the glass to push against uh, the pattern of the mold. Now, because it's being pushed out, that means that there's this interesting relationship between the exterior and interior of the glass. So you can feel the reverse of the pattern um, on the inside. So it's different from another type of glass known as pressed glass, which could look very similar with this kind of pattern on the outside, but because it's pressed into a mold, it has a flat surface. So this is an interesting type of glass. Uh, because it's pushed out. Now you might also see these small little lines or indentations on the outside of a glass blown like this. Um, this was because the glass pushes into those seams of the, hin of the hinged mold, um, but it might be a little bit harder to find on a piece like this because there's only two, uh, two molds or two pieces to the pattern but also because a um, glass blower could smooth out those indentations to make them less apparent. Now, this piece was primarily done in a mold, but there is one portion, the handle, which would have, was actually is, is hollow and actually would have been attached after the, after the fact. And then also the mouth of the pitcher, although play in, from the mold, would have probably been manipulated afterwards. 
Um, the glass blower would have done this by reheating the glass after it was taken out of the pattern and then using different uh, different tools like forceps uh, to pull the glass to create something like this mouth. Um, they would also reheat the pitcher to use the same pattern for multiple different kinds of objects. So this is a pitcher, uh, but the same mold could have been used for a decanter or a bowl or a plate. Um, and again, they reheat the glass and then pull out the sides say, for something like a bowl. And then they might drape the uh, pattern over a bowl mold to create that circular shape, that more exaggerated circular shape. The base of this was place, was actually um, taken from the mold. That pattern comes from there. Um, so let's talk about the pattern itself a bit. This type of uh, glass was categorized into about three different styles. Geometric, which usually has geometric shapes on it. Arch, which usually uh, has these patterns that uh, mimic Greco-Roman design. And then Baroque, which is this one. So they often have palmettes, trefoils, scrolls, um, that kind of thing. This one in particular, if we zoom in a little bit, we can see these five petal palmettes, which are very indicative of this Baroque style. And then we're going to zoom out a little bit and you're going to notice these beaded arches, which repeat all the way around as the palmettes do as well. And they uh, form this arch around these three ribs right here, which come up from the base. And then they all kind of come out from this rayed base, which has 32 equal ribs coming out of it. And they all kind of, if you if you look at it, if you see where the ribs go, they all kind of meet at the base of these ribs, at the base of these beads. It's really interesting repeated pattern that's very perfect and, and beautiful. And this type of glass um, actually came as a response to a European type of glass known as cut or engraved glass. You've probably seen something like it. Um, Waterford crystal is engraved or cut. And that comes from Ireland um, and England. And at the time it was the big competi competitor for American glass companies. They really didn't have the skilled labor that they did in Ireland and England. And they were struggling to compete with these um, companies who are bringing in this really beautiful elaborate glass. And so these companies created these really innovative um, glass pieces by doing it in a way that was much more cost effective. So they were able to create the look of cut glass by using just one mold, which was costly to produce at the beginning and required some skill. But then they could use this one mold to create, you know, four or five different types of pieces and all they needed was uh, somebody who already knew how to blow glass, who didn't need the same skill that they required to be able to cut or engrave the glass as they did in England and Ireland. So this was a really innovative response uh, from the glass makers of uh, America in a way that allowed them to economically compete with the um, European counterparts of themselves and allowed for the American glass industry to really um, prosper at, during the mid 19th century. And if you're interested in learning a bit more about the early American glass and the history of glass and this piece in particular, um, you can take a look at a research notes that I wrote back in January. And you'll find that by going to our website to www.barnesfoundation.org slash what's dash on slash research dash notes. And I hope that you'll, you enjoyed today and learning a little bit more about American glass and about this piece in particular. That's it for today's Barnes Takeout. I hope you enjoyed learning. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel to get more daily servings of art. You can also leave a comment below. We love hearing from you. Thanks for watching. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.